Shizwack. What's going on, you beautiful PC gamers? I'm Shizwack, back with another Should I Buy It, where I take a game, break it down, rip it apart, and give you everything you need to know to make a sound decision on that purchase. Let me waste my money so you don't have to. That's right, the most comprehensive reviews in the world. Well, they're pretty comprehensive. Today, I bring you the Technomancer, going for about 50, 55 bucks on Steam. I know it's a little more to spend, but it delivers, it does. It's got its flaws, of course, but it has a lot of great things about it. And I'm going to cover that. You're going to know exactly what's what in this video. It happens at the same time as Mars Warlogs, which we'll call part one to this series. This is developed by Spiders. It's a great game. Take it for what it is. Don't compare it to The Witcher 3. Don't compare it to Mass Effect. Just play it and enjoy it for what it is. It takes place on Mars, of course, and it, this is about a couple hundred years after Mars has been colonized. There's multiple factions. They're big kind of water corporations that run the show. Uh, there's other small ones too, but they don't really touch on those. They hold power with water. Everything is controlled with water. There's two big main factions, one known as Aurora, the other known as Abundance. They're both kind of... One relates to the other as being fascist and this and that, but they're both fucking fascist. They're both, you know, a dictatorship, and they're hardcore. There's mutants, they slave the mutants, they make the mutants work. Being a couple hundred years after this colonization, there was a point called... I think they call it the, uh, the turmoil? Anyway, what happened was the entire solar system, our solar system, shifted. The planets kind of went all fucked up and wonky, shifted a bit closer to the sun, just a bit, enough that this it could still be livable in the shadows, but now the radiation in the sunlight is too much. So cities are built in the shadows, outposts are built in the shadows, everything is built under the cover of shadows in Mars's, Mars, Mars's canyons and uh, nooks and crannies. So that's really the premise. Uh, there's no money. It's all based on serum, which is cool. It's a cool mechanic that they bring in. When you kill someone, you can take their serum instead. And I'm going to show you that. So not instead, but basically they're laying their dead, knocked out. You can leave them alone, which is good for karma or neutral to karma, I'll say. And the, or you can harvest their serum, which takes a big hit on karma, but gets you extra serum, which is currency in this game. I'm going to load it up, show you what's what. So I've recently hit level 23. I'd like to think by now that I have a good idea on how everything works to do a proper should I buy it on it. So it's very much an RPG. You have a party, up to two members. There's all kinds of teammates with their own dialogue, their own stories, their own reps, reputation. You can choose two of them to join you, switch them out at any time. You can load them full of gear. They have their own unique skills. Uh, it's very fun. What this game does well is covers everything. You've got multiple skill trees. You've got attributes. You have other skills. You know, you have your classic activation skills. You have your classic passive skills. It's got loot. It's got reputation. It's got multiple cities. It's got about 40 to 50 hours of gameplay altogether. That's with side quests. I think you could probably push it over 50 hours, judging on uh, where I am right now. But it does what it does well. It's just there's... I find it a little bit shallow. Don't get me wrong, it's a great game, but like the loot system's a bit shallow, the crafting system's a bit shallow, and by that I just mean a bit too simple. Even the combat, it's fun, it's tough, but it's pretty simple. And I've found everything in the game like that so far. Now there's lots to do, lots to see, lots, to, lots of lore to learn, but you're gonna, like I said, take it for what it is. I love the setting of this. I love the lore, the background, and the stories of these giant water corporations and the old colonies that were originally settled on Mars that are now ruins and forgotten since the, uh, fuck, what's it called? I'll get, it'll come to me. The ter turmoil? I don't fucking remember. Anyway, I'm gonna jump right into the interface, show you kind of how parties are loaded out, skills, that kind of 
stuff. I'll show you the inventory. Let's start with the inventory, because that's a big part of any RPG. So here it is. You have, you know, head, chest, legs, feet, and then each team member will have a different kind of set of weapons. Sometimes they only have one, but you see in my case, I'm more of a rogue, so I have a knife and a gun. I can also use Technomancer powers. I can also switch it out at any point to the other kind of classes, which I will show you. So helmets, I mean, pretty straightforward. Defense is measured in percentages. Bonuses work with crafting. I can't do anything with these now because they don't have slots for crafting, but you basically insert upgrades into weapons and armor. So you'll see the weapons, my choices, this is what I can use right now. And these are for different classes. Basically rogues, you got your tanky kind of shield and mace style, then you got your big ass staves that uh, are more of a warrior style. And then of course you can have your, this equipment cannot be used by this character. Forget it, that's more for NPCs and uh, teammates that can use sniper rifles. You cannot, as far as I know. You have your materials, you know, you're, you'll be popping health potions a lot, focus injections cover your mana, we'll call it, and then traps, which are super handy, actually. Do not put traps off if you're playing as a rogue. I did it first and then realized how fucking useful they are. But you can just kind of roll around and lay them down, I'll show you in combat after. Your materials for crafting and your quest items. The skill tree. So, Technomancer, Guardian, Rogue, Warrior. And every level, you're going to get one of these points. Every other level or couple levels, you'll get some of these, which I'll, you know, I think these are attributes, and then these are just other uh, skills. So I went pure rogue. You've got your passives, and you've got your actives, which actually some are passives, but these are actives, sorry. You'll see, not only can you select these passives as you go, you can modify them. So you put one point in to get it, and then you can actually put another point in the next level or whenever to modify it a bit, and you'll see upgraded. That's basically changes the way it works a little bit. So rogues are a lot of dodging, uh, rolling, and that's where this is neat, is that each playstyle is very different. You, like as a rogue, you can dodge and roll, Whereas the other classes, not so much. You can block, uh, or you can, you can actually do a, in a legit dodge on the warrior. You can block on the guardian. So they each play very uniquely, which is fun. And you'll see, you'll be looking at this tree saying, oh, that's not that big. But you can cross class. So what I'm doing now is I'm going rogue and technomancer, which will give me access to Technomancer abilities, which are a lot of shock. Technomancers are all based around electricity, and they're this elite group of people that some work for the government, some work on their own, but they're basically the most powerful people on Mars, and they harness these powers of electricity, which is still a bit of a mystery on how they get them. I think that's what they're covering in this story. But that's where I'm specking into because your Technomancer abilities can be used right alongside any of the other classes. You can go pure Technomancer, but I went pure Rogue, and now I'm going to start specking into Technomancer because I can activate those abilities without having to switch my, let's say, stance. They're, they're more stances for the classes. Talents, that's what it is, guys. So, your talents, you know... Traps, lock picking. I know there's only three levels, but you only get one of these, I think it's every four levels ish. Crafting. Science. This happens with a lot of, you know, speech stuff, NPC stuff. Charisma. Pretty straightforward. Stealth. Stealth is great. I have no complaints there. And exploration which gives you a chance of loot. But, you know, nice other little skill tree. Just added. And then we have our, you know, agility, power, constitution, and strength. So agility, I went pure agility for my rogue. It ends there. And then from there, I'm going to spec up into power, which is my direct technomancer 
uh, abilities, attributes, sorry. Here you have your information window telling you how far along you are, I guess, for each class. Let's see, I'm digging into the rogue. And your quests. So, remember I was saying it's how it's a bit shallow? This, this is a good example of how that applies, because I can't get any backstory on these quests. Like, if I'm like, oh, where the hell did that come from? Or I forget where I picked that up. Let me read. I, I'm a big reader when it comes to video games. I like to make sure if I'm doing a quest, I want to know exactly what's going on. I'll read the quest over again when I'm about to take it on so I can kind of get immersed in it and know exactly what I'm doing. But this doesn't have that. I can't, like, in search of the Lost Dome, wait for the rover to be repaired, speak with Melvin Manser, the leader of the... Like, that's all they give me. And this is a huge step in the main story, but if you forget or put it down for a while and wondering what the hell's going on, good luck. And then you have secondary quests. I've knocked a bunch out. You can get a lot more racked up than this. You have your map. Different levels. It's big. This game's big. It's open world. And you have your world map. Your Mars map. Right? These are, the, these are only the areas I've discovered so far. And I'll show you a bit about your party and how you set up your team. So it's that easy. Go to any spot that lets you set up your team. You select two members. This one's locked because I have a quest on the go that involves Andrew. But basically gives you a rundown on a passive bonus and a relationship bonus. Which no, none apply because they all kind of hate me. They still work with me and fight with me and talk to me. But... Like, I don't know where this relationship status applies. I guess it's just to the bonuses. Anyway, another thing where I was saying it's just a, a little bit shallow. And you can load out all your teammates from here as well. Just by going through them. And equipping what you want. What you will. This is a crafting station. So it's pretty simple. Basically, if you have this bonus, if you have slots empty, you can load them up with your bonuses that use materials. And that's pretty much crafting. You don't create items, you upgrade items. You gotta buy the mats from a vendor that you have to find, so make sure you're checking recipes, the recipes tab in a vendor to make sure you are getting the recipes as you go. But let's say, okay, so Aurora Technomancer gloves. Upgrade, you select the slot. Sometimes there's multiple slots, like you saw. And then I'm up to level three. I like damage upgrades. I think I'm just gonna go with the damage upgrade. And it requires these parts. You go upgrade. Yes. Good. Done. You can also recycle items, which breaks it down and gives you mats. You can create health injections. They do weigh some, but you can never have too many. You'll be popping those like Gatorades. Gatorades? I don't drink Gatorade. Do people pop Gatorade? I don't know. So here you can see switching your stance is pretty easy. And you have basically three buttons. This is like a disruption, your main attack, and then you have an AoE. And that's, of course, just for staves. Fire your pistol as a rogue. You can do a stab, which can poison. And you got your main attack. As a guardian, you can do a shield bash. You can block. And you can hit. And then you have kind of the inherent Technomancer abilities, which I don't know if I can cast them. Yes, so you have those which you can then spec to your bar. You push tab and you get this menu, so you can just basically bind your different skills 
to your hotbar, and you can have more than six, it's just all I have bound right now. You even have a flashlight, which I didn't know about until very recently. Very handy. It pauses. You can kind of pause the game mid-combat, decide what you're going to do or what you want to equip, and uh, go from, and then unpause it and go from there. In the top left corner, you see I have my XP up top, which is the white bar, and then my health, and then your energy, which has an icon in it. That's like a I sustained that. But I'll show you. I can remove it. And it basically takes the electricity off my weapon, but gives me an extra energy slot so I can cast more of these. And that's pretty it. That's pretty it. That's pretty much it. That's the way combat works, and that's the way the systems work. So I'm going to stay rogue, because it's what I'm good at. Okay, so now I'm just going to tackle a side quest. I don't want to give away any spoilers. Story is a huge part of this game. It's all voice dialogue. There's lots of extra shit you can learn through dialogue if you just go kind of digging through each character. Everyone you talk to or can talk to has a whole slew of options that you can talk about just to get more backstory. I love games that do that. So, for now, I'm going to tackle Zoology. And you can go follow this quest. It blocks the others out and just keeps the one you're following so it can show up on your map. That's just an activation, and he climbs. I killed those storm locusts, so I'm gonna go cash that in. This zoologist dude over here. So, he's probably got a weird name, does he? Zoo zoologist, or zoologist. Okay, a little different. Anyway, so, the way the naming schemes work, it's interesting. You have anyone from Abundance, or who was raised in Abundance, one of the two big corporations, their trade is their last name. So I am that you play a, a character named Zachariah, and I'm basically Zachariah Rogue Mancer. If I was just a Technomancer, I'd just be Zachariah Mancer. You know, you have Amelia Reacher. They they all have these names that kind of indicate what they do. And then for Aurora, the other faction, they have even fucking stupider names. Things like, well, like the first one, Roy Temperance, or Innocence, um, Charity, fuck, I don't know, Oblivious, like weird ass names like that. And they're given them at birth and there's a whole fucking story to it, but that's how the naming schemes work. Hey, Brad. Zachariah, how's the hunting? Okay, so we'll give him this back. Got your last specimen. At last! Glands of the infamous Locusta Tempestatus. Fantastic! My thanks are endless. Tell me, how was its behavior? All the quests are voiced. It's like behavior. so, like I said. I don't... Well, it looked like it was absorbing electrical power. The acting is actually decent. There's some which is absolutely cringeworthy. Willing to make some more but collections? there's some well, acting... The voice acting so, is, the is decent. Would be quite a catch. It's been known to dwell in the canyons surrounding Nox. I was expecting something I'll absolutely terrible for voice acting, just based on kind of, you know, Mars Warlocks. Yeah, didn't have the greatest voice acting. It was pretty terrible. But this is much, much, much better. And then you can, you know, in this case, I can ask him about different creatures. But every character has their own. You can ask about places, people, um, anything, factions, that kind of shit. For example, I can just, you know, hey. talk to this guy. Hey back. And then I can get, you know, information about places. And everyone has a different options, but that's him. So I wasn't even listening on what I had to do there. Kill a black mole. Okay. There is a day-night cycle, so but I need my bed. Which is over here. You can also bring up this map. Which is super handy. I use it all the time. You have a stash. You have a bed to sleep in. You have a crafting station. And you have rooms in different areas of the game. So let's go until... Let's just try Twilight on the next day. Rest it out. Give us a bit more time. 
going to kill a black mole. Hopefully it's not daylight. Dark enough. These things are super easy. There's critters that fly and then jump on the ground. Pretty simple swipe right now, but you see I can uh, stab with the poison and just knock them down. can't just keep shooting. Your gun overheats, and depending on your skill level, it will determine when it's going to overheat. So, Drain Serum, that's the option I was telling about. On critters and monsters, it doesn't matter. You can just drain the serum. But on people, it's going to give you a negative karma bonus along with some serum. A negative karma bonus. It's not a fucking bonus. It's a detriment. You know what I mean. Quick save at five. going to attack and you push dodge at the right moment. There, we ran too far away. I love my gun. It's poison too, which is huge. It's fucking cold. Die, bitch. Combat's fun, but it's simple. It's very simple. Doesn't mean it can't entertain them, because it does get challenging. When you get multiple enemies and they're all kind of doing their own thing, the way they're fighting you, that's where it gets a lot more difficult. Lots to explore. Lots of different paths. It's not very linear. Like, you may look at this and think, oh, that's... You know, you can only go here or here. But... This is just one area that I can explore. And I will. Oh, you can lock on targets too. I said my mouse. I don't like that. 
It, it kind of plays like The Witcher 3 like that. Green glow on that one dude. Poison. Yeah. That means a predictor. I'm not popping my Technomancer abilities because I'm just so weak. I do this... Force Lightning! Traps. Just set them like this. You can pop them down in combat. Give them an explosive upgrade after you lay them down. Awesome. Oh fuck, I hate these things. Where is it? See that thing on the wall is what's controlling these tentacles. They call it a tick. And they're a pain in my ass. I could maybe have my flashlight on in here. There's very dark areas where you are going to need your flashlight. And I was thinking to myself as I was playing in the start, like, why the fuck is this game so dark? I can't see anything. They didn't, as far as I know, don't tell you that there is a flashlight that you can use. So we're back to the beginning here. I kind of just did a loop around. We're going to go see the quest giver to cash this in. Oh, new level. Okay. We got a skill point. I'm going back to the Technomancer tree. I'm not quite maxed on Rogue, but this, I'd rather go Technomancer abilities than spec into these two. So that's what I'm gonna do. I need more power, which will come. This is for my electrical weapon, which is awesome. Okay, that's what I'm doing. Because I use that all the time. Hey, Brad. Zachariah, how's the hunting? Turn. I've got your last specimen. Oh my. A sample of the black mole. I really I, I can't even if you character creation too, you can it, change the, the way your character looks. Storm locust glands you basically alone. choose a face and, I'll be sure to and then you can modify the features. eyes. You've earned it. Hair color. That's pretty much it. True. There's enough really? faces that make it you know you're looking for? choosy enough. Indeed. The shield toad supposedly resides in the It is an established character anyway could, though. Back I would Ryan. love to study its skin. Not like Little you can rename them. Mutants don't really disclose much kind about of like city. Shepherd. But for a hunter like you, I'm sure capturing such a specimen shouldn't so be a It's hassle. a very simple character creation best. system. And that, you know, that again goes with what I said. I mean, it, it does everything, but it doesn't do anything super exceptionally well. That's the only thing about this game. If you like RPGs, Get it. You'll love this. I promise you that. If you're just big into RPGs, you're going to have fun. If you're going to pick it up for an action game or some Mass Effect type gameplay or Witcher 3 type combat, you're, you're not going to find it here. You, I mean, it, it doesn't play like an action game. It does, but it, you won't get that satisfaction that you're looking for. And there we go, guys, the Technomancer. It's a great game. Don't let my, you know, comments on it being in shallow all around it's it's got a lot it's got tons of stuff to explore and things to do and loot to collect it just keeps it simple it's definitely worth it like i said if you're into rpgs grab it if not wait maybe wait till it's on sale if you haven't played mars warlogs go play that it's quite different uh it's a lot shorter but definitely worth playing before you get into this that'll be it for today i'm shizwak and i'm out Love you guys. Peace.